Hello, my name is Holly and I will help you complete this form. This form is part of the authorization process for cremation. It is the legal document, so please be sure to complete it accurately and completely. If you have any questions, please contact us by phone or email and we will help you. Many of these questions are probably obvious, but we will go through each one of them anyway. Let's get started in the first area. Please include the full name of the deceased. Next, we need the age at the time of death. Next, we need the date of death and then the place where the person died. Some of the next questions are already completed as these relate to our funeral home, the facility that will be handling the cremation. The next space that needs to be completed is the family email. This email address is the one you use to send this very form to once it is completed. Usually the email address of whoever is filling out this form is best, but it can be any email address. Next we need a phone number. Usually this is the number of the person completing the form, but it can be any number where a responsible party can be reached to help with this process. The next two areas are for including your initials after you have read and agreed to the conditions mentioned. The first area is where you affirm that you are the person with the full ability to authorize this cremation. The second is where you affirm that all other individuals who might have equal authority have either not been able to be contacted or they would not object to this cremation if they were contacted. You are agreeing that the funeral home and crematory will not be held reliable for any unauthorized cremation. In the next box, the name of the funeral home, Eastgate Funeral Home, is already filled in. There are three basic options for disposing of the cremated remains. Only one of them can be selected. Select either family to decide, inurnment and cemetery, or scattering. The next place is where you tell us if the deceased will have any valuables included with their remains and what you want done with these items. Normally, this is jewelry or other personal effects. If there will be none, just select the no valuables option. If there will be some included, please select the option valuables listed below. Then in the text box, please let us know what those items will be and what we need to do with them. Please select one of the next options regarding viewing of the deceased and your desires for a service. If the deceased has a pacemaker or other implanted device, it must be removed before cremation. It is a significant risk to the crematory for any pacemaker or other similar device to be left in the deceased. Please let us know if the deceased does or does not have such a device still implanted. What do you want done with the remains? There are three basic options noted. If you want them returned to the funeral home, please select the top option. If you want them released to an agent of Eastgate, please select this option. And if you want the remains sent somewhere, please select that option and include the address below. We are required to ship remains through the United States Postal Service by registered mail. Some final questions remain. Please let us know if you want the remains placed in a decorative urn or a temporary urn. We offer several selections of urns that you can find under our merchandise link. That could be a good choice for you. If you only need something temporary, in the event the ashes will be scattered somewhere, maybe the temporary urn is best. The final question is regarding the type of container you prefer for the deceased before cremation. Please select from either of these two options. Please remember that we are available to help in person with any of these questions. You have now answered all the questions. You do need to read all the information in this area. Then you will need to type in your name in the print name area. You will need to enter the date in the date area, and you will need to sign your name 
in the draw your signature into the box below area. If you are using a PC or device with a mouse, you can draw your signature by placing the cursor in the location where you would normally start writing your signature with a pen. Then hold down the left mouse button and trace your signature. You can let up on the left button to interrupt the drawing as needed. If you want to stop and start over, just click on the clear button. This will remove the tracing and allow you to start over. If you are using a tablet, you can usually just use your finger or a stylus to draw your signature. Once you complete your signature, please click the continue button. You will be able to view a completed form before it is submitted. If you find an error or something you want to change, just click the previous button. You can see where we went back and made a change. Next, click the continue once again and review the form. You can go back as many times as needed to make changes. Once you are finished, just click the submit button. If everything is completed properly, you will see a message, success, your submission has been saved. A completed form will be emailed immediately to the email address entered at the top of this form. The form will also be sent to our staff. If any items are missing, you will see a message to go back and complete the missing items. Then you will be able to submit the form once again. This completes the entry process. You will be contacted by our staff shortly. Thank you for using our website and for using this guide. We hope it was helpful to you. Thank you for allowing us to be of service to you at this time of need.